Welcome back to a new one on this channel and UVI just released a new synthesizer HX Audi. This video will be a review, not a deep dive like I usually do, but let me know down in the comments if you would like a deep dive. This synthesizer is a take on the ARP Odyssey and I say take because it's not a clone of the ARP Odyssey. If you are looking for a clone or an emulation, this is not it. And I gotta say, I, I have the original, it was my first synthesizer, so I know it very, very well. And as you might know, you know, the ARP Odyssey, it's great, it's, you know, it's a legend, but you know, it it has a lot of limitations. It was released in the 70s. Still, you know, this synthesizer, the HX Audi, has that vibe, but it adds a lot more modern things. So that's why I'm saying it's a take. So when you load this, you can get this screen. So this works on top of the UVI workstation, which is a, a kind of a contact player, like a contact player. Of course, it works a, a lot, lot better. But you know, you get this screen at first. At the top, you have a lot of presets. And when I mean, when I say a lot, it's just a lot lot you have sequence arpeggiated basis and you know you name it you have a lot you even have the patch book from the actual ARP Odyssey, you know, when you get the, the patch book from Quark, well, you know, you get the presets right here. So when it comes to presets, you know, you do get a lot. And they all sound pretty, pretty good. If you ask me, if I go to a new one, they all sound good. And sometimes when you get a new, uh, new synthesizer, When you get a new synthesizer, the presets, the factory presets, usually are, not, are just not that good. Well, this is not the case. All the presets are just pretty, pretty usable. If you want to create uh, sounds, right here you need to go to the edit page, and I'm uh, loading an init preset, so it sounds pretty dull. And I gotta be honest, at first I saw the interface and I thought, you know, it looks way too clean, you know, not a lot of options. How far can you go with this synthesizer? That's, you know, always uh, the question. And then, okay, so you get two oscillators right here, oscillator one, and then the two, you get your most common shapes. And I'm gonna go down in volume because it's gonna be a little bit way too bright. Maybe I'm gonna chop a little bit of the frequencies, just a little bit. And you get the most common waveforms, which is, you know, is an emulation of the ARP Odyssey, which is fine, I guess. So then you get the two, and the two can do pretty much the same than the one. You can change the octaves pitch and then the color and then all the oscillators will go through a mixer right here where you can go down in volume and up in volume just control the volume and then you have a noise generator now just to notice the noise generator can do different types of noise which is always good but then i thought not so impressive right just simple oscillators now if you go right here at the top so you have something that says bend so this one is a phase distortion and with he and here you have a bunch of types that you can use so you can maybe select the shape i'm gonna go maybe to an octave lower and you know what i'm gonna go to the effects and enable some of the effects because it can be uh way too much in your face and right here you can bend it with the waveform and just get different different sounds if i go here and of course you can manually and I'm, I'm manually modulating this and you know this is cool that you get this i'm gonna go to the formant because you can get your traditional sounds but also you can take it to something else Okay, so a little bit better. Now, if you click here, you will get the modulations, what you can use to modulate this param. So if I go to my mod wheel and I go up and I play something, I can now control it with my mod wheel. If you want to use an LFO, yeah, you can use an LFO and you can even bring the LFO too, because you have two, I'm gonna show you in a minute. And then you have these step mods, which are maybe sequencers that you can use or steps that you can use uh, to run a modulation. And these ones are just fantastic. I'm going to show you in a minute. Now, the main, I, the main thing is that you can use something to modulate all of this. Okay, so phase distortion. Great, but you know, still not enough. So here comes the punchline. If you go to the page number two, you have FM, and then you can do unison for each of the oscillators. So I maybe can go to right here, make it two voices. Maybe I can, I can detune it, make it really wide. And then maybe I can go to oscillator two, enable this and make it, I don't know, three voices, maybe four voices and less detuned. Right, so great. 
Now then, you can do a fem. So right here, you can maybe go and you can double kick if you want to, to at whatever is that, where you need to go. I'm gonna say minus 12 semitones. And then you get a fem. And I'm gonna do a little bit of frequencies. All right, so. And right here, you can use the you, the usual suspects, you know, velocity mod wheel. You can even do the LFO. I'm gonna go back, you know, to minus 12 and have the LFOs just, you know. You know, create something for us. Right here, the oscillators, they are by default, you know, they have velocity on, if that's what you like in this case. Uh, seems I'm talking and playing, I cannot control it that much, so I'm gonna be uh, setting them back to nothing, so... And alright, so you know, a lot better. Right, so super cool, because now you can do phase distortion, you have an FM side of things, you can do unison on both, so it keeps getting better and better. Then at the top, you see the samples. So, okay, so the Arp Odyssey had no samples. So, yeah, you get the traditional type of oscillators with, you know, the phase distortion and the FM, but, you know, on top, you can add some samples. And right here, you have the mixer for the samples. So I'm going to go down and up on the samples. And you are uh, listening to the saw sample. And if I play it, of course, polyphonically, you... You get it. Now you have the most common controls for a sample, like the sample start. You can go down and up in octaves, and then of course you can change the pitch, right? And you can still do the unison if I turn it on. Maybe I'm gonna do four voices. And all of this is coming from the sample engine. Notice that all of these ones, you know, the, uh, the main oscillators are off. If you click here, you have a lot more different sounds. You have effects, you have keys, pads, if I maybe go to pads, I don't know. A lot of different samples. Now, I'm gonna go right here at the top, and it says ARP patch book. If you go to the presets, again, patch book. So what they did, they kind of sampled different sounds from the same the patches, of course, that you get from the ARP Odyssey, from the cook uh, book. And you get them right here. So you don't have to tweak, you just get it as a sample player. And this is super fun because maybe I want to use the strings, maybe it's way too simple, I'm gonna go to a reverb and chorus because it sounds better. But then again, remember that you have your oscillator section. If you turn it on, you can just, you know, make a blend with the samples and then the oscillators. I have the, right here, maybe I can, Go down, do a little bit of bend, maybe with the fussy, I just get a different sound. Alright, so that's the plan. You have now a lot more possibilities. The sample player and the oscillators. But then, of course, you go to the envelopes, you need the envelopes and you need the filters. And right here on this department, envelopes and uh, and filters, uh, this is way simple. It's not uh, as complex uh, like the oscillators and the sample engine. You have an amp envelope. Right here, you can change the slopes for the attack and the slopes for the decay and the release. You can see it. And it's a common, very common ADSR right here. Nothing we are gonna go down the sample and just use the oscillator Eh, Maybe it's too low, right? So just a very common ADSR you have a pitch modulation. Maybe you can do a little bit of time and just Do the modulation with the pitch maybe I'm gonna go to this way So we can change the slope what do we get on the filters? Right here, again, it's super simple. You get a low pass, you get a high pass, 
you can of course run a different modulation uh, that it's not an envelope you know your your usual suspect but then if you go at the bottom and you can do uh, the low pass and for now i'm gonna go full sustain on the amp envelope i can you know modulate the low pass with the envelope that we have right here at the, at the bottom maybe you noticed maybe you didn't i'm doing a lot of resonance it's pretty resonant which is good i guess it's you know what we want from a vintage type of synthesizer or an emulation so it's actually you know quite good <laughs> Yeah, you can do that. But you know, still, you know, that's cool. You can even modulate the high pass, right? So you can modulate this one or you can modulate this one with the ADSR, which is the same ADSR that you have on the amp. So again, you think about this, nothing weird. Uh, you can mod modulate the resonance, as you can see. Nothing weird on the filter and the, uh, the envelope department. It's pretty standard. Then you have a sample filter and the sample filter is completely independent from the oscillator filter and that is actually quite good you're not tied to you know use one filter for the whole sound you can just separate the sample engine from the oscillator engine and okay all of this is great right so lots of sounds but i think the lfo the steps and the arpeggiator are the star of the show the LFO offers a more traditional type of modulation. First, I'm going to go to reverb and chorus and maybe go back to right here, the edit. And I just have one single one. So what I want to do, maybe I want to go to, I don't know, formant. And I want to, and I want to modulate this control. And I could, you know, go to LFO A. So this one, again, offers a more traditional type of LFO. Of course, you can change the frequency and you can even modulate the frequency and sync it to your DAW tempo. Also, you have a, de a, de a delay. You have a phase. You can change the phase of the LFO and then you have the delay and then the rise. So you can have that slope, you know, that nice introduction. Maybe it's a little bit too loud. Of course, you can control the depth of the LFO. But then, you know, you have the LFO B, and the LFO B is a little bit different. So, right here, you can choose other types of waveforms and not just the traditional ones. So, if I go right here and remove the A and I go to the B, and you can do both at once and have a combination, now you, you get different. You get different sounds. All right, let's go to a different one. What happens when you humanize? I'm gonna go to a single, you know, a sine wave and go, and go faster. So, that is that when I play it, I'm gonna play a higher key. When you humanize, it's not just a simple sine wave. It's just, you know, adding imperfections to the LFO. And the smooth, if you have something a little, a little bit harsh, like this, it's gonna smooth the corners. So, you know, you have two LFOs, the A, a little bit more basic and traditional, and the other one, just a little bit more creative. But then, you have the steps, and this one, it's just super, super great. So, right here, what you can do, it's uh, map or modulate with, uh, you know, the steps. So, you have, uh, like, a sequence. I'm gonna go up on the step mod one, and I'm doing the the phase distortion every time that you play is going to be playing all of this and you have different profiles so maybe if i want to create something like something like that i just get it or maybe something that goes down and i'm doing this to the formant of the a i'm going to bring the two and i'm for now i'm just going to disable the velocity because again i'm talking and doing this i'm going to chop a little bit of the frequencies a little bit of resonance maybe that was too much resonance a little bit of envelope and attack notice how easy is to create a sound and I didn't even touch the samples, so maybe I could go to the samples and, I don't know, bring a brass, something like that. I'm gonna disable the velocity on the sample, gonna keep the sample, and then, you know what? 
I'm gonna use four voices, detune it, you know, just maybe spread it. I'm gonna go down the sample and I don't know, let's see what we get. Let's go delay on. All right, so let's see. And how easy it was to create all of this. At the bottom, you of course have different controls to control the steps. And the most, you know, the most common controls uh, to control the steps, you can go up to 64 steps. So if you want right here, you can just draw something, whatever it is that you want. And this is gonna run demodulation. Of course, it's a lot of steps. Maybe I'm gonna need to do something like that. <laughs> Right? And it's super, super useful. I'm gonna go to an init patch, and then again, you have the effects, and they are very simple. They sound really good, very simple effects, you know, nothing super crazy. But then you have the ARP, and right here it says click to enable, so you need to turn it on. And notice that you have the dot, so you can turn it off and turn it back on. So if I go to the ARP, you have uh, an ARP, but this one, it's, you know, not just a common ARP. I'm gonna filter a little bit and I'm gonna go back to the ARP. If I play a chord by default, you get an ARP, right? So just play a chord, I try it, and you just get an ARP. Nothing super crazy, I guess this makes sense because this is an, an ARP. But you can, of course, change the motions like you would do with an ARP, but at the same time, it's a step sequencer of 16 steps. And right here, you can do variations. If I play a chord, when I go here, I can variate my arpeggio, my, my, my arp, so that's good. I can even do gates. You can do even pitch if you wanted to. You can change octaves. And I'm doing it right here with you. And you know what? I'm gonna go to the effects because right now it just sounds way too dry. And that's it. Again, I did almost nothing. It's a init patch, a little bit of effects, and now it sounds super cool. And you can also pan the app. Again, great. At the left, you have the oscillators, so you can do this just to the oscillators. If I go maybe right here and keep the oscillator, I'm gonna maybe go to the sample, enable the sample, and have something else, right? And that would not be arpeggiated. And just the oscillator, and I maybe can go to the filter, do a little bit of filtering, a little bit of resonance, which is the sample player, and keep the arp going at the top. I don't know. I don't know what else you want. <laughs> then you have the sample. You can do the same to the sample uh, and not the oscillator, but then you can do, of course, both at the same time. Great. And on top of that, right here, you have the modes. And these ones are really cool because you can choose, you know, which is the basic, which, which is what we are doing, or you can maybe have it played on the fifth. And maybe I'm gonna be doing a little bit less steps, like four steps, so we can hear this. I'm gonna go to, again, harmonized, and I'm gonna be playing maybe a ninth. If I play one single key, and I'm playing one single key, an F, you can see it right here at the top. Maybe if I go to sixth, or maybe I can go to a chord, to up, you get that kind of a glide. I'm gonna go to more, more steps, maybe I'm gonna do eight this time. And I'm gonna be adding randomly just some things right here. 
What is it? Every time that I add something, I don't know. I get something. I'm playing one single key. I'm not playing a chord. If I play a chord, it's gonna be maybe a little bit too much. Sounds great. I am playing a chord. I'm playing a C minor seventh. So I really don't know what to tell you. It's just, you know, super creative. If I go to uh, Fraser, you have two modes. You have the ARP and then you have the Fraser. So I could just play one single key and this behind the scenes, it will kind of create a phrase for me. I can select right here how low, uh, how low can create or generate this phrase. Maybe if I go to one, it's just, you know, between zero and one, it's just gonna be one. And I'm playing one single key. If I play a chord, it's a little bit different. I can change the warp, and it is a little bit different from the phraser. Then at the top you have different, uh, you know, presets. So if I go here, it's gonna give you, uh, you know, just a preset for the arp. But if I still go to the maybe initial arpeggiator, I can go here, and I'm gonna again play one single key. I can make it random, make it random, make it random, random, and there you go. Still, if I want a phraser, I could go to a phraser and control the up, the low, and high. Right, so now it's time for my conclusion. I was gonna film a video about Opal, which is the um, optical compressor from UVI, and then the tape, you know, the new plugging the tape. And I reached UVI and they told me, dude, we're gonna, we saw your channel, you do a lot of synthesizers, we're about to, you know, uh, release the HX Audi. Well, would you like to, you know, check it out? And I said, yeah, why not? The first time I opened the synthesizer and I ran it on my computer, I thought I'm not gonna film the video because it's just, this is just way too simple. But after a couple of minutes of using it, I loved it. Not because, you know, it can do it all, like uh, pigments, current or, I don't know, serum. If I wanted that, I would go to pigments or current. I loved it because the interface, it's clean and it sounds great. And, but mostly because it's, it's easy to use and it's fun and it's creative. You can get something, some sounds, very easily. Just like I showed you with the sequence and the ARP just generating something on the go. So in conclusion, I liked the synthesizer. But always, you know, you need to give it a go. If you groove with the style of the synthesizer, well, then maybe you should get it. Still, like I said before, if you're looking for a faithful emulation of the ARP Odyssey, this is not it. Okay, so I guess we are done here. Thanks for watching. And again, if you liked the video, please like and subscribe. See you on the next one.